My name is Inyolua Victoria Olowe. I'm an SS3 student of God's Blessing Comprehensive College, Yemetu Ibadan. I'm 15 years and the title of my piece, which I'm about to present to you, is My Life. The beginning of the story, Ade Binkwe was about to do her graduation that day, and her mother, Ajoke, was telling her to hurry up so that they won't be late for the graduation. So Ade Binkwe moved to her room to get ready, and Ajoke also moved to her room to get ready. While Ajoke was dressing up, she saw something modeled behind the shelf. So she went to check what it was, and behold, it was a priceless possession that had been with her since when she was a kid. A cellophane bag that contained all, like most of the things that were with her when she was a kid. A battered sandal, a battered clothes, and the most important thing was a diary in which she had written a life story. She was scrolling from page to page and her mind went down the old rusty lane. Ajake was the last born and the only girl from a family of seven. She had six elder brothers. Her father's name was Adeogun, he was a farmer. Her mother's name was Tayo, she was a petty trader, and they all lived in the village of Alabidum. Then a particular day, Adoke's mother was attending to a particular customer in shop, then she suddenly collapsed. And she was on the verge of dying, she sent for her children, she blessed all of them. She gave Adoke a coral bead, in which her grandmother also gave her on her dying bed, so she also did the same too for Adoke. And she died and she was buried. Everyone cried and she was buried behind our husband's room. So life went on. And there was a particular day I held a brother called Tayo. He had fever so he could not go to the farm. And Ajoke was left at home to tend to him. Then he called her inside his room. He locked the door. To cut the long story short, he raped her repeatedly and threatened her that if she tells anyone, he's going to kill her. And since she was little, she fears dying. She could not tell anybody. So this went on and on till she was 15. And her father decided it was time for her to explore city life. So she went to Lagos to stay with her father's younger brother, whose name was Uncle Bayo. But she thought that living in Alabidun village, everything that transpired between her and her brother would end there, but no, it did not. Instead, she also got sexually assaulted by her brother, her father's younger brother. But this time around, it was different because it led to pregnancy, and they both resolved for abortion. But the night before they were supposed to go for abortion, her mother appeared to her in her dream and told her if she abort the, pre the pregnancy, she's going to die and she does not want that. So the following morning, she told Uncle Bayo, I'm not going to abort the child. And he was furious and said, he's going to send her packing, and which he did. So she began roaming on the streets of Lagos with nothing to eat. Then a woman who owns the canton saw her and took pity on her, brought her in, and she was working in the canton till when her pregnancy was seven months, when her pregnancy was seven months rather. When her pregnancy was seven months, one day she was attending to a particular customer in the shop where she slept and fell. And the person was someone important, like an important dignitary. So the woman got annoyed and started calling her bad luck, bad names, yelled at her and chased her out of the shop. So her roaming on the streets began once again, but it was a little different this time around because she was pregnant and she could not really walk. So she resorted to begging for money. So she was on her daily business one day when a woman called Mrs. Williams came and saw her and took pity on her and decided to help her, having her in her pathetic life story. So she took her in and cared for her until, her pre until she delivered the baby, and it was a baby girl, who she named Ade Binkley. And when she delivered the baby, Mrs. Williams took her, Ajoke, and her daughter abroad so that they can have a better life. Several years has passed and Ajoke was now a certified medical doctor. And her daughter, Ade Binkwe, was also doing well. During those periods, there had been a man who in her, but since she had a lot of nasty experiences with men, she was not ready to fall for their tricks again. But later on, when she saw his intentions were pure and true, she decided, okay, let me give him a chance. And which she did, to cut the long story short, they got married, 
and a year later they gave birth to a bouncing baby boy named Oluwadamilare Larry Michael Bilu. Um, she decided to come to Nigeria in search of her father and brothers. But when she got to Alabidu village, her father had died and her brothers were nowhere to be found. She was still lamenting on that when she got a call from Luth, Lagos State Hospital, that Mrs. Williams collapsed and she's on her deathbed and she requested to see her joker before she died. So she and her husband rushed there, but on getting there, she found out Mrs. Williams had died and she left a note for her. And in the note, she saw that Mrs. Williams willed all her properties to her, being the only person she ever knew. And she cried because she had lost two important people in her life on the same day. Then her daughter jerked that back to reality, in that the whole story was centered on her remembering her past. So her daughter told her that the past is in the past and now they have a bright future ahead of them and she should move on. She said yes, she has moved on because a life story should be the one written in a book to see how victims of rape, how successful they can be. So that's what my story is all about. And what inspired me to write this story was actually a woman. I was like scrolling through the internet then I saw a woman talking about her life experience. She was actually a victim of rape also. So listening to her, I just got the motivation that, okay, let me write something about Rick also. So thank you.